folks, right around the corner, perhaps as soon as October 1st, we may, and many people are saying, likely have a government shutdown. I, for one, happen to think that this government shutdown will be greater than 30 days. I believe the longest government shutdown on record is 55 days. This one may eclipse that. So you think that is possible. And you know the concierge to small business loans. You got to ask, what might be the impact if we have a 30-day shutdown of SBA? Because I'm guessing lending stops, but uh, maybe I don't know. What's going on? What happens if the government shuts down? Yeah, I would say it's going to be a big pause, mostly on um, non-delegated SBA lenders, because there's still a lot of lenders that are non-delegated. They send their, their packages into the SBA for underwriting. So all that, that's going to get shut down. If they're a PLP lender, a direct lender, they're probably be, they're probably going to fund them on bridge loans because they, they can fund on a bridge loan and then take it out with SBA as it comes along. But I don't know. It's it's really interesting to see what's going to happen. So let me so so basically, obviously, SBA is a government entity. It will be one of the entities that close if there's a government shutdown. That's step one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, step two of this situation is there are banks or lenders that are taking loan applications or packages with the ultimate intention of selling them or passing them through to SBA. Is that fair? Well, if you're non, if you're non delegated, yeah, you, you have to send it to SBA for underwriting. So, okay, so you take the package, then they underwrite it and they give you like a approve eligible. You got it. You got it. Okay. So, so do you have any idea what percentage of, is it like 50, 50, 60, 40, a guess? Uh, I would probably say it's around 50-50. All right. So 50% of the packages stop right there because there's nobody on the SBA side to receive them. So that stops. The other 50% are with lenders that basically have the green light to self-underwrite. If SBA is giving some kind of approval or scoring yes. or whatever. Yeah, they, you got it. They, they self-underwrite. They draw docs. They fund in-house and they do everything themselves. But- yeah, the, the question then comes to be is is if there's if they're going to freeze, maybe the banks will freeze in general. Um, True. And even if they're they don't know how lender, long, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it could be a yeah, huge it, problem. <laughs> well, it, actually, I'm just playing with this in my head, right? So we already know half the packages stop. The other half could be done. It's probably by what's called the regional banks, majority of them. And guys, if you're not paying attention, there's a lot of regional banks that don't have a lot of money. I mean, they don't have a lot of cash. So I got to imagine they're not going to be in a hurry to put out a lot of cash on bridge debt, hoping SBA picks back up. So we could see SBA just lock up, possibly. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> – I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, hopefully it gets worked out. But who knows? Well, let's, so let's play this out. So again um, – so okay, now we'll step back. And how would I use this as a buyer? Well, I got to tell you, one of the first things I would go to is, you know what? That little 10% seller carry we were looking for, we're going to be talking about seller carry a lot more. Maybe we'll put a short-term note on it. Like, hey, you got to cover me for a year because we know SBA will open up eventually. So maybe, maybe that, I guess that's the first thing I would probably try to do is, hey, Mr. Seller, you got to finance me for at least a year. And then there'll be some kind of takeout clause or something. That's the first thing that jumps out to me. What do you think? Yeah, uh, this is uncharted waters. I mean, there's going to be, I mean, what about all the deals that are getting ready oh, to go to flight. closing? And then at the end of the month, they say, hey, we're shutting down and everybody halts all these transactions. <laughs> well, that I mean, that's, I mean, so I don't, I, I don't know if you remember when the country shut down in February or maybe it was March of 2020, there was a lot of real estate deals that were like approved. Some parties had wired money, others haven't. The money never showed up. Or like I'm out, right? I didn't. I didn't push send. I'm. You know, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I can tell you, I, there's a lot of SBA transactions going on right now. So it would be a nasty occurrence if this happens. So where there's great pain, there's great opportunity. So what is what does one do? Let's just play devil's advocate. Let's paint the worst picture. Let's paint. The picture that SBA is down for 30 days and no, none of these other second tier lenders decide to lend because they have no cash. So first off, the concierge to SBA is not doing any work, or at least not 
feeding that. But we 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 could be building the pipeline up front because there's still opportunity, right? Cody Sanchez is still going to be talking about boring businesses. She's still going to be talking about all these things. So I think there's going to be deals that still get done because there's always motivated sellers. How do we, how do we make how do we turn this into a positive? Well, because you're right. I mean, you don't need <laughs> bank fi- we we know you don't need bank financing, and there's a lot of alternative lenders. So let's say you're buying a business that's got mostly equipment. You can get equipment loans. You can get equipment yep. financing. If you have a 401k that's with an old employer, you can do that. A Rob's rollover. Yep. There's there's so many people out there. I have so many conversations with people that don't realize that they, they're able to take. I had a, a call yesterday with a gentleman that's a, a fan of the show here, and and he was like he had a couple hundred thousand in his bank. He had um, an old four hundred one k, I think, with a hundred grand in it, um, and you know he he has a couple rental properties. Like to me, those people are golden. And he's and he's like, hey, could I potentially buy this business? It was like a million eight, and I said, yeah. I mean, ten percent. Yeah equity injection, you got 250 grand sitting in your bank, you got reserves. And if you negotiate a seller carry back too, yeah. It's, so you can, you can leverage with the SBA financing. Now, if this wasn't, if this got frozen for a month, which I don't really think it's going to happen, but we always have to yeah. think about downside risk. Um, but yes, seller financing, alternative loans, there's, there's a lot of other financing ways to go. So I just say, if there's a freeze in the market, it's going to create opportunity like always. Yeah. Well, and again, let's not forget, we've talked about this many times. The SBA loan process is four or five months in the making. So unless you're really close to the end, freeze isn't going to stop you from due diligence. It's not going to stop you from looking at tax returns. You should, Frankly, Bo, you should be busier in the next 30 days if, my, if I'm right and it's shut down than before because you're going to be helping people get creative and look at other options and getting their files ready. Most people aren't even be ready to submit to SBA for 30 days. Is that fair? Yeah. SBA okay. Express loans can close as quick as 30 days, but most traditional moving parts are going to take 90, 90 yeah. days, 120 days, because there's just so many moving parts depending on the equipment. But yeah, I mean, all in all, I would say right now in the commercial lending space, because I also do multifamily loans and and. Yep. and I have about $75 million in my pipeline right now. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's not going to affect me if I if, if it freezes right. for a few weeks or months, but the we would have to pivot on our strategies and yeah. that's seller finance deals. No, absolutely. And again, this is the opportunity. This is why we're here on this channel. We deal with reality. We plan for the future. I always want people to realize where there is great pain, stop looking at the pain. Look up because that's where all the opportunity is. And there's going to be plenty of opportunity if this gets shut down. And again, folks, if I was buying a business today, I would be using the government shutdown as one of my levers to get increased seller financing. If somebody wanted to come and talk to you and talk about options, Bo, how are we doing that? Go to boexteen.biz and click on one rental at a time. And there's also on that same tab, there's two tabs. There's one to book a call with me and there's another one because uh, we're having an event on the 26th. If you want to come to a virtual event, you can. RSVP there as well. And we're going to have five semi-passive franchise models. The franchise themselves are coming in to present on their brands. And these are all semi-passive models. And if you're interested in buying a business, maybe you think existing business, but you should also, I always tell people, look at look at some of the franchise models because it's an eight, $860 billion a year industry, the franchise industry. So it's huge. So you should learn both avenues. Absolutely. So this, this is on the 26th of this month? Yes. Uh-huh. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.